ask you, what does it mean to you and how exciting is it to see so much change in the TV industry over the years? It's, it's a fascinating time. It was so great to be there when it was beginning, when the analog years started uh, some 60 years ago, and to be here tonight in the last 10 or 15 minutes of a great 60 years. Believe me, it's been exciting. I think all of us have learned an awful lot during that period of time. Hey, uh, hey Stan, the tech those pictures that they were playing. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just going to ask him, I was, I was going to say, hey, listen, the technology has changed, we've watched the buildings change, even the people who are in the buildings, have we stayed the same? Are we the same people we were way back then? You know, basically we are, but we have so much exposure, so much uh, uh, involvement of people that you get different impressions. But uh, the wonderful group of news people I work with today are just like that great group of news people I worked with 60 years ago. And KTLA has always been at the center of the news world, with that helicopter first, with mobile units that were out there all the time. It's been the history of KTLA, and it's a wonderful future because of that, that past 60 years. Well, I, I really think the live programming, this goes back to the days before videotape and kinescopes, so everything was live on five, and that's when the cameras really danced and sung, and just wonderful. And it's those been great years. They've been wonderful years, and I kind of hate to see them close. It's just about uh, 20 minutes left of a wonderful era of a great time for Southern California, for KTLA, and all the people that work there. I think I'm going to miss it. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, we're not going to go away completely. Remember, 10:45. We're going to be shutting this thing down. And if you're having problems with your analog system, just Refilter those channels, recycle it, it will work in the end. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Okay. Um, Stan's getting antsy, you see that? <laughs> got the handle right there, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Damien, thank you. Well, believe it or not, the switch to all digital TV has actually been in the works since 1987. Effort gained momentum after the September 11th terrorist attacks in 2001. Lawmakers wanted to replace analog television so that some of the airwaves could be allocated to emergency broadcasts. Yeah, it's true. Now, earlier we showed you the rich history of KTLA over 62 years of broadcasting, even through the eyes of our legendary newsman, Stan Chambers. That's right, and KTLA has truly been on the leading edge of television news in the areas of news gathering technology and live event coverage. So, on this evening of the official switch to digital TV, here's one more glance over the shoulder at our amazing, pioneering work delivered daily here at KTLA. Western America's first television station. As the first TV station west of the Mississippi, KTLA brought game-changing innovations to news gathering, including the first ever news helicopter. And exclusive report from the world's only telecopter. What today has become a required news tool for covering traffic, police pursuits, and other emergencies was actually created by two KTLA engineers. They converted a Bell 47 helicopter in their backyard in 1958 for the KTLA news team and was put to the test covering the devastating Brentwood fires in 1961. Drops its load and we all pray that it hits. KTLA's eye in the sky gave LA viewers an exclusive bird's eye view when the Baldwin Hills Reservoir burst in 1963. It documented the explosive scene as Los Angeles was torn apart by the Watts riots in the summer of 1965. Looters are having a field day here. And in 1969, when a Scandinavian Air DC-8 fell out of the sky off the coast of Malibu, it was KTLA's helicopter overhead. At least 30 survivors have been rescued. Four bodies have been found, and another 11 are still missing. KTLA has also had a long story history of firsts in L.A. sports. Some have been silly, like Bowling for Dollars, Demolition Derby, and something called Moto Polo. And some have been enormous crowd pleasers like roller derby and the earliest days of professional wrestling. Now coming into our view is the Continental Noble, the group of the blue sea, the Baron Michel Leone. And some have been a natural fit, like Angels Baseball, from station and team owner, the legendary Gene Autry. I'm back in the saddle again. Sportscasting great Dick Enberg reported for KTLA on the fairy tale title runs of the UCLA Bruins with Wooden, Al Cinder, and Walton. The station brought the L.A. Kings dramatic Stanley Cup semifinals victory over the Maple Leafs in 1993. And when Dodger pitcher Hideo Nomo threw his historic no-hitter in 1996, KTLA aired every pitch. Hideo Nomo! 
He has not only shot out the Rockies, he has pitched a no-hitter. But KGLA's biggest achievements have come through serving Los Angeles in times of crisis. The station brought the news when Southern California was rocked by the 7.3 magnitude to hatch up the earthquake in 1952. The viewer tradition of turning to KTLA continued through the 6.6 .6 Silomar quake in 1971 and the devastating 6.7 Northridge quake in 1994. The refrigerator in our kitchen just blew out into the living room. I mean, stuff was shaking, the walls were cracking. And earlier, the entire KTLA news team came together for what would prove to be the most devastating weather disaster in Los Angeles history, the El Nino storms of 1982 and 1983. Many residents had to be evacuated. KTLA chronicled every dramatic turn as the storm surf, the flash floods, and the mudslides caused $300 million in property damage and left 14 dead. But even with all the work, South Broadway is still a scene of tremendous devastation. Community crisis coverage, crowd-pleasing events, news-gathering innovations, six decades of television firsts that have made KTLA the Southern California News history there during the analog era. Well, with the digital transition retailers, they're hoping for a boost in sales of smaller TV sets. They figure that consumers would want to upgrade secondary sets in bedrooms and spare rooms that are not connected to cable or satellite service, and that would call for smaller over-the-air digital TV. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment that we've been waiting for a very long time, and Finally here. It's finally here. The big DTV transition just seconds away for the last time. Let's go out to Mount Wilson Jamie and stand standing by to make the switch. He's just moments away from changing our whole world from analog to digital here, and it's so exciting. And we're just going to have a couple quick more moments. Stan, what do you remember about this analog? When I was thinking this is the end of the analog, and I was there at the beginning of the analog, and I remember a Saturday afternoon having a new television set in our home in uh, uh, Santa Monica Canyon, but I had to put the antenna up, and I went up the side of the mountains through all the brush and everything, got to the top, finally got the antenna together, and I thought, maybe we're going to have television. I came down the hill, fell a couple of times, went into the house, turned on the television set, and we got it. The whole era of television began, and that way for me, and here it's the ending here tonight. Well, on that note, is it time to flip the switch? Yeah! Is it time? Is it? <laughs> I think so. Okay, everybody. At the end of five, five, four, four.